Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to spend time with you and to spend time in your home. Well, we share time at my home here, right at TV Kojiko. Today, I'm so excited to bring you uh, the music of an absolutely amazing singer who has truly an incredible story of how he rediscovered music. I'm going to introduce you to Jeff Orson in a, just a few minutes. But if you would have a story that you would like to share or a comment you would like to make about this show or any other episode, please give me a call at 289-891-6703. I'd love to hear from you. Or if you prefer to write, you can always drop me a note at deb.home at kojiko.ca. It's a great day right here at home. And in a moment, you will meet Jeff Orson. Welcome back, and Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Thanks for inviting me. You and I have been chatting back and forth. And we have. I heard you sing at the Purple Heather in Burlington, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to let the rest of our viewers <laughs> listen to you because your story is so incredible. You portray your story through your music. Yes. For the most part. Absolutely. Yeah. But... Let's go way, oh. well, not because neither one of us are way back. back. We're yeah. not that old. Yeah, right. But let's go back to how you got reestablished in music by talking about life a long time ago. Sure. Where are you from, actually? Are you from this area? Uh, I I'm, I'm live in Oakville now, but I was originally uh, from Niagara Falls. I grew up in Niagara Falls, yeah. Ah. And was music always a part of your life? Um, you know, it kind of came in and out of my life um, over the last four or five decades, I guess. I, when, I, when I was very young, I started and uh, played for a while and then got out of it, then got back into it. So it, intermittently, we've had this kind of on-again, off-again uh, relationship. Yeah, always guitar? Uh, always guitar, yeah. 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 And do you come from a musical background? Um, not at all. No? No. Ah. No, no, not at all. So think about the very first time you ever picked up a guitar. Why did you do that? Do you remember? Uh, I, I do. Um, my brother had just bought uh, a new Beatles album, which was uh, <laughs> Rubber Soul. And, um, and I remember um, we had a, a broom or something like that, and I wanted to be one of the Beatles. <laughs> and so I started playing like that, and uh, finally uh, um, I, I, my folks uh, broke down and got me a guitar. And so it kind of started there. Um, it wasn't a guitar like the Beatles, of course, and I didn't sound like the Beatles. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's how it kind of started. Wow. So were you yeah. in bands and stuff like that at school? Uh, you know, in high school, I had uh, three or four different bands that, um, that I played in, and, and we were always kind of forming and reforming. You know, you played with the group of people, and then you did this, and you did that, and, yeah. and you jammed. Um, that's kind of how I... I got into writing then, you know, I started getting into writing. I played a lot of um, oh, progressive rock and, 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 you know, like really loud stuff, right? And, um, but I was always uh, liked um, acoustic guitar and softer music and folk and, and uh, Bob Dylan and, and Gordon Lightfoot and, and, and people like that. Yeah. And um, so I was always kind of doing that in the background. Of course, everyone was yeah, like, you, you know, tell them. that wasn't <laughs> wasn't very cool thing yeah, to do right. uh, to be writing um, uh, folk music or whatever. So um, I just kind of kept that uh, to myself for the most part. Yeah. So then we all grow up. We do. And we get on with a very busy life. Mm -hmm. And can you describe to me what your life was like up to a particular point where? You actually heard the big C word, but oh. describe uh, your life. Before uh, you the know, big it was C. pretty, uh, pretty hectic, pretty driven. Um, I travel uh, a fair bit, and uh, was very directed towards um, a kind of career and, and goals, and um, really didn't think a whole lot about um, life and why we're here and, and 
bigger questions like that. Um, not that I sit around and do that all day now, but uh, some of those bigger picture things I really didn't care about too much. And um, like I said, I really didn't have a lot of time for anything. Right. Uh, and really, probably not a whole lot of people either, I guess, right? Like, um, just, I just didn't have uh, time uh, for that to kind of get involved in other people's stories and, and, and that type of thing um, until the big C. Mm -hmm. So you went to the doctor one day and were you actually, did you suspect that perhaps you had cancer? You know, I, I didn't. Not at all. Um, it just started with I, I had stopped uh, the ability to sleep. I started having problems with, with sleep. And so uh, I went and said, you know, I'm having problems with sleeping and um, et cetera, et cetera. And got some sleeping pills and stuff and, and it, it went on. And so, uh, and then went back and uh, said, look, we're gonna do a full physical and everything and blood and every, all that. And maybe we'll, we'll find something. And uh, so we did and the next day I got a phone call um, from my doctor's office saying you should come in. Isn't that the dreaded phone call? Oh, yeah, because they don't yeah. usually call about, I shouldn't say it's good news, because they do. They, they deliver a lot of good news. But a call like that, you know what it is. Yeah. Like something's wrong, or they yeah. found something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so there was this whole kind of path of doing a whole diagnostic and whatnot to find out what was wrong with me. And? Uh, so I had colon cancer. So, uh, and I'm like, well, what does that mean? They said, well, we're not quite sure. Um, so you have, to, um, you have to do a bunch of, obviously, all the tests and, and different things. And uh, I was very, very fortunate. Um, it happened very fast uh, from the time it was kind of detected to, through to surgery and everything like that. It was very fast, and I was lucky. I had some great health professionals who were... I'll save my life, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but it was, uh, that was pretty frightening. Yeah. So when was this? This was, uh, started in March of 2014 and um, did the surgery in June. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, the, the symptoms started and then April, May, and then of course all the diagnostic and whatnot, and then June we actually did the surgery. Right, right. So you went th through the surgery, did you have treatment? Uh, I did the, I did the uh, surgery and everything, and it's kind of a, like a long process where they're like, well, you know, we have to wait for the pathology to come back from yeah. this. And like, it, it's, it's several steps, right? You're waiting right. for this, like, is it good or is it bad? Right. And they honestly can't tell you. You know, like they have yeah. to go through all. So that waiting part every time is, can wear you down, yeah. right? It gives you lots of time to think at night when you don't sleep. <laughs> um, worrying about it, I guess. But um, that's, that's kind of, uh, of how it went. Um, and then, so you're, you're going through this, you know you have cancer, you, you've, you've had your surgeries and yeah. so on and so forth, and now you're waiting to find out whether or not you're in remission, whether they've got it, right. you know, what yes. the rest of your life is going to be like. Absolutely. And... Yeah, is there going to be um, chemo or radiation or... Um, did it spread? Yeah. Like, like has it has it gone some all these things, right? Yeah. Uh, that so all people who have cancer, cancer deal yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're you're kind of you're you're wondering there. Yeah. But um, they said no. Look, we, we're lucky that um, all the all the tests and everything came back. They said look, you're lucky, <laughs> lucky to be alive. Um, that uh, it was stage two, and that uh, it hadn't spread to the liver or lungs or, or anything like that. And that, uh, of course, you have to do tests every three months and, and uh, right. you know, different blood and then colonoscopy every year and all that. But um, as the doctor said, don't forget about this, but don't let it rule your life, right, uh, as far as right. worrying about it, because uh, I think we got it. But, you know, the first five years, as, as you well know, is, yeah. uh, is important. And um, it's a statistic that it, it can reoccur. So what did you do to change your life? Because when, when you get news like this, your life changes. Whether you want it to or not, you change, so your life changes. And in my personal, in my case, mm -hmm. I wanted those changes. I realized all of a sudden how absolutely important life was. Yes. And that stuff I was worrying about yeah. and focused on 
wasn't the important stuff. Right. Was That's it like exactly that it. It was pretty instant. Mm -hmm. The things that you worry about, irrigation systems, uh, <laughs> uh, flat tires, uh, all kinds of things that otherwise would mess up your day really become the, the meaningless. Right. And uh, you really start to think about, all right, what's really important if I have so many days to do this, what, what do I really want to do? And worrying about things that can be fixed uh, isn't one of them. And it, but it happened very quickly. Yeah. Because like, okay, you have another chance for however long that may be to, uh, to do something else with your time and your life and your thoughts and your, your feelings other than sit around thinking about this day-to-day -day stuff that really doesn't matter. So what did you do? Um, in I, one minute, in what one, did you do? In, in, in one minute? Um, I wanted to do this music thing for a long time, so I got back into that. Um, I wanted to uh, get into some kind of um, helping people uh, as far charity-wise, so um, got into uh, just helping very ad hoc things with, with, with people. Um, I wanted to really connect with other human beings, uh, which I, I, I guess I had done somewhat in my personal life, but uh, not as much as I do now. Um, really welcome company and, uh, and getting involved in other people's lives. Wow. Yeah. I know for me, during my breast cancer period, we were, um, my husband and I were in the studio and we were we were recording um, a CD that became a very huge part of my therapy and his therapy as my support system. Is, is it music and is it writing music that kind of was I, I your think um, It took my mind comfort? off it, yeah. It really took my mind off it at first, like uh, while I'm waiting for the results and all this stuff. It really kind of, um, uh, I stopped thinking about it for a while. Mm -hmm. for a couple hours or whatever it was. And staying busy with something that you really like, you don't think about bad things for a while. And then after um, we got some very good news, um, it turned into, um, it just kind of grew from there. And um, I got more interested in it and, and the writing kind of came along and, and started performing and, and just, it's just, been, it's just been so much fun now, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you take things really seriously and I don't anymore. I feel like, you know, it's good. When we come back, we're going to find out uh, what music has done for Jeff's life, and we're going to hear his words in music. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Jeff, we're sitting here in our little stage right here at home. And before, we, before the break, we were talking about how you really found music again once you had discovered that you had cancer. And really, uh, music is therapy. And so writing your songs and getting back in touch with this beautiful instrument really was therapeutic for you. But what about the words? Did they just flow out into songs or were you stumbling over them or how did that work for you? You know, at first um, I had some really kind of rudimentary uh, ideas about um, kind of some lyrics and, and some chord progressions and stuff. And the earlier things were um, relatively uh, simple, simple music. Uh, but I, I think um, I had a fair bit um, stored up over the last number of years and certainly in the last couple of years to um, I really didn't have to think about it too much for the first I don't know 20 or 30 songs or whatever mm -hmm. and um, they were just like pretty on right they, they yeah. came pretty quickly and then as time went on you kind of refine your craft a little bit more uh, and, and hopefully progress and, and get a little bit better um, they took a little bit more time um, the song I'm gonna play uh, today called California I just had this kind of a, um, an idea for you know a chord progression that I've had for a long time, and I was playing with um, 
uh, a good friend of mine, a piano player, and uh, I said, look, can you just play some chords to this? And I just went, da 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 and anyway, uh, kind of hummed it out. So that night I was driving home, and uh, I just had a line kind of come into my head when I was driving, your plane's already landed, and you're off with somebody else. Now, I don't know, I just sang that, and I was looking at my rear view mirror, you know, going home, and I didn't really think anything more of it. And then I started with that, and um, I got this whole song about um, someone going to California and being left behind, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it took maybe 45 minutes to do once um, wow. I had that. I don't know. You don't rest. know where it No, I just, just, it was just kind of a line and, and, and uh, separation and, and, and being connected and, what, and it just went from there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, you know, often um, when when musicians write, when when people write music, they can either write the music or they can write the lyrics. But putting both together is often quite difficult. Yeah. With you, it seems to it, your mind must be a very busy place because it seems that the music <laughs> and the, <laughs> the words just kind of they come together, yeah. or yeah. or is it? traditionally that you think of the words and then you think of the music? You know, I, it, it kind of works, uh, I guess, both ways. Um, I sometimes sit down with some chords and I can't think or, or, or a melody and I don't, for the life of me, don't have the words at all. And other times I have the words and try and fit them into a song. However, those both uh, types of way of doing it, um, they result sometimes in not the best work. Whereas when it all comes like, like that all together like just you don't have to fit it together it yeah. just the pieces all kind of go together yeah. um and then it really works right yeah. so that that's kind of but you do it both ways you know sometimes you you have a you see a line i was in new york and did a song called rainy new york morning i was going to a meeting uh it was hot and rainy and i was tired and it was like three days uh, of back-to-back -back meetings and i just kind of wanted to go home so i thought it's a rainy New York morning, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, uh, wrote the song on the plane, and I have a video on my website called Rainy New York Morning. Just but like 45 minutes, an hour, something like that, and just and kind of is. popped out, yeah. There it is. Yeah. You're going to do California for us. Absolutely. I want to make sure that uh, everyone has the full Jeff Forson experience with yes. California. So I'm going to get out of the way. All right. And uh, I'll come back and join you. Okay. I'll enjoy your music. This is California. All right. Thank you. So you're leaving me for California Get a little West Coast sun in your hair And you know I'll be waiting here for you When you come back from there And your plane has already landed And you're off with somebody else And all you've done is left me here stranded All by myself California Couldn't believe the words I read With all I have for you I hadn't planned Summer alone While you're off walking around In the sand So please come home From California That seems like it's a long ways away But what do such as us to be so far separated We both struggle sometimes with one another While we're looking for a place to be free But I can't ever give you a reason To treat me so cruel California Can't believe the words I've read All I have for you I hadn't planned 
I was so entranced with what you were doing. I'm just staring at you. Well, that's all right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you can stare at me anytime. There you go. Right there. No Thank rub. you. Thank you. That was lovely. So, you know, it sounded so personal, and it sounded like it was a big part of you and, and your world. And even if it's a story that you're telling, you're, sto you're, you're telling it in such a very, very, very personal mm -hmm. way. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's what the trick is to, or not rather, the trick, but do you think that's what it takes in order to connect with your audience, to yeah. really feel the words that you're singing? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I listen to a lot of other singers, songwriters, and in interviews and different things. Uh, and um, Chris Partland, who helped me a lot, uh, obviously uh, produced uh, the record, uh, along with uh, Ron Camilleri, uh, he said to me, uh, you know, people know if a song is honest. And I really didn't know what he meant by that um, some time ago. But I guess I do now, um, because if it doesn't resonate with people or it sounds maybe contrived or something that I guess maybe you've tried to invent, um, then um, it, it, maybe it doesn't translate as well as something that um, uh, maybe you've lived or drawn from from past experiences or you've been to California or whatever it is um, that kind of resonates with people, hopefully. Um, so hopefully that works. Mm -hmm. You've had the opportunity to uh, play, <laughs> I'm going to say, all over the world. Yes. Really? Yeah, I have. I've been very fortunate. Singapore? Yeah. New York, as you said. Yeah, New York was, was phenomenal. Yeah. That was great. Now, is this, did you ever dream of doing this? No. Where did this? Uh, I, I didn't. No, I, I really didn't. It's just, um, I have a, a couple of friends of mine uh, who are always, uh, they're very supportive and uh, always looking for um, venues and places. And they, they call me from wherever and say, you know, I, I know about this place or, you know, you're going to be there. Have you thought about this? And, um, and so um, usually it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But um, it just has seemed to have happened somewhat by accident mm -hmm. and I guess somewhat by plan, but uh, somewhat by accident that it just seems to be um, happening mm -hmm. like that, right? Just yeah. how, how we met at the Purple Heather. The Purple Heather. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an incredible experience to be able to sit beside you and, and watch you unfold in your music and your music experience. And very briefly. Briefly. <laughs> describe yourself today. Uh, much more interested in uh, other people and much more involved with uh, life and, uh, and really enjoy life a lot more than I did when I was younger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which doesn't say that I don't appreciate being young in my youth and whatnot, but um, this, this is a great place to be. It's a great life, and uh, I want to use every minute uh, that I can um, enjoying it and making it better, and hopefully better for other people. Well, thank you. You have made our day today, <laughs> Jeff. And thank if you. you'd like to know more about Jeff's music, please visit his website. If you would like to hear Jeff in performance, he will be at the Burlington Performing Arts Centre yes. um, in the lobby playing prior to the Celtic Tenors on December the 20th. I will be there. Please join me for that. I hope you've had a, a good experience today and that you've felt a lot of the warmth that truly is in this studio today. This is 
a man who has gone through quite a, a life story, a life-changing story, and you know it's in all of us to do. And we don't always need a big word like cancer to make the change. The lesson that both Jeff and I have learned out of life is it's valuable, it's here to be lived, and why don't we just live it the best way we know how. I'm so glad you've been with us, and again, if you would like to share your experiences or a message, please give me a call at 289-891-6703. And if you're shy, you can always send me a note at deb.home at kojiko.ca. I'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Home is where the heart is, and we are sharing our home and our heart. See you again soon. Bye.